This man is a psychotic serial killer, and one day he decides to be a menace. He just watched The Strangers, but he's on a budget, so he cops the most basic mask he can find and throws a beanie on. That's not drip, my guy. He then proceeds to go out to a remote area and kill a random woman. No! During that process, he finds out that her next door neighbor is deaf. And just like that, he thinks it's his lucky day. That he's been handed a kill on a silver platter. That there's no possible way he can lose in this situation. Because this cuck is playing on easy mode. Or so he thought. So once this killer realizes that our main character, Maddie, a writer living in isolation, is deaf, he decides to get a little cocky. Because he is now confident enough to walk into Maddie's house. Why do the doors always have to be unlocked? Take her phone. Hi. Take pictures of her while she walks around the house. And then send them to her. <laughs> This dude is excessive. And then to push things even more in his favor, he turns off the internet and slashes Maddie's tires. But after all this, he actually gets a way out because Maddie reminds him that she hasn't seen his face and writes that she won't tell anyone about what he's done. But this dude somehow gets even more confident. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Hey, fuck it. Back in the mail, it's gone. Uh -huh. Shit, I got some and at this moment, I knew he was done for. I can come in anytime I want. And the game begins. The killer is still being childish, and Maddie realizes that he killed her next door neighbor who came to visit her earlier in the movie. Don't understand why is you doing this, bro? <laughs> but she remembers that her neighbor had a phone in her pocket, so she sets off the alarm in her car to distract the killer and have a chance to get the phone. But that shit isn't there. Oh no! I don't know why she didn't just run at this point, but it's whatever, I guess. Attempt number one failed. But she gets some damage on him because when he tries to get in through the window, she slaps his ass with a hammer. She then leaves her house and hides under a crawl space before hitting a dead sprint for the woods. But the killer has a damn crossbow. So she runs back into the house. Attempt number two, failed. But the killer is being tested more than he thought he would be. The shit a little more advanced than he expected. Maddie's next move is to go on the roof and distract him by throwing a flashlight, which works momentarily. But when she tries to get down from the roof, he comes back and shoots her in the leg with the crossbow. Oh my God. and then nearly hits her in the head, but he's not built like that. This bum then proceeds to try to get up to the roof and gets his weapon snatched. Stupid. Maddie then gets back to the house, closes the window, and the man who thought it would be easy takes another L. Maddie then tries to load the crossbow, but that shit is hard. Next, the psycho has to deal with the Superman boyfriend of the woman he killed earlier, who comes to Maddie's house looking for her. And although he makes the killer situation more complicated, anyone watching this knew this dude was gonna die. The killer tricks him into thinking he's a cop while looking like this. And by the time the boyfriend realizes that he's a fraud and that Maddie's in trouble, he gets stabbed in the neck. Kalel, no. God damn it. Let's go. But this is when the game completely changes, and the killer officially starts playing on hard mode, veteran difficulty, hall of fame, whatever you want to call it, this shit gets harder. Because Maddie's special ability comes into play. Watch out, watch out, watch out! Damn! You can't run. She has a voice in her head that goes through the alternate endings of a story or situation, which allows her to make novels that end up being Netflix shows, and also completely turn the tables on this dude. You cannot run him on that leg. I cannot run him on that down leg. Crossbow, but that has to be a perfect shot. This voice was mentioned earlier when her neighbor that got killed asked her how she's able to make such good endings for her books. I mean, really, it's just logical reasoning, but in a horror movie, that pretty much makes you Batman. So the voice tells her that she can't run, hide, or wait, meaning there's only one option that the killer isn't expecting, and that's for her to kill him. Yes, sir. She takes the crossbow that she couldn't get to work before and shoots him in the shoulder. <laughs> But when she runs back to the house, she drops an arrow, and when she tries to reach for it, her hand gets brutally destroyed. Please! No! Like, that shit gets fucked up. I feel like reaching for the arrow was kind of reckless, but she probably thought that was her best chance of survival. But even after this, she still tells the killer to stop being a coward and come in the house, because she realizes this dude is a fraud. Maddie then goes into the bathroom and waits, but the man fails to break in through the door, <laughs> so he breaks in through the bathroom window, and he has a chance to end it. But this dude still thinks he's playing on easy mode, so he lets his hot ass breath touch Maddie's neck. I bet if I hit the right spot, I can make you scream. What? <laughs> Maddie 
Maddie then goes to the kitchen. The killer comes after her and gets sprayed in the eyes with the wasp killer. She had this dude looking like Omni-Man. She then sets off this loud ass alarm and ruptures his coward eardrums. The killer, finally realizing what difficulty he's playing on, tries to kill Maddie, but it's too late because Maddie taps into her willpower and stabs him in the neck and he dies. Game over. This is what happens when you thought you were playing on easy mode, but you suck. Pussy.